all at night. Uh, so we filmed from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, for two days straight. And it was maybe 15 in Toronto. It's snowing. And uh, you're just in a little tent. And uh, you're there for 12 hours uh, just waiting to uh, film your deal. And I wasn't in it for very long. And I was out there the whole time. But uh, I like doing that stuff. I've always been fascinated and curious of, uh, of that side, you know, TV and movies and stuff like that. And what amazes me, which I think we compare it, I can, I personally compare it to NASCAR, is until you see it firsthand, you don't know how much work goes on behind the scenes to make, uh, and how many people are involved to just make one little scene of a movie. Uh, and it's almost the same way in NASCAR. You don't realize how many people are involved to just put a race car on a track. Um, that's, to me, I feel like that's kind of a cool um, thing that we have in common, those two uh, industries. But uh, I enjoy doing it. I, I really do. And uh, hopefully I'll get more opportunities to do it, uh, you know, in the off-season or spare time. You find it good for your brand? Yeah. I mean, why not? You know, if, I, don't, I don't think it's hurtful if you can get on TV, you know, whether it's the Taken Deal or uh, Voice in Cars um, or, you know, the, or the Logan Lucky movie. I, I don't think it's a bad thing at all, especially if you enjoy doing it. And um, uh, it's personally something I enjoy doing. Ryan, uh... Well, I mean, I think but I've been really fortunate to get a lot of great chances um, from NASCAR and uh, to go do things outside of motorsports. Um, you know, NBC and NASCAR were a big thing of uh, getting me to do the taking thing, the Cars Voice, and uh, Logan Lucky. That was uh, that was all really from NASCAR. And um, I've always been very open to do a lot of things they want. And uh, not it's not always been stuff like that. You know, you go do some markets to where maybe you don't think it's going to be a very good market, but you do it anyway because it helps the sport and it helps yourself and it's a win-win for everybody maybe even if you don't like doing it i feel like if some drivers were, were more willing to do these things they'd get asked more to do it and uh the reason why i got why i get asked to do it a lot is because i say yes a lot because i think it's good for the sport and myself um i can tell you personally he doesn't like doing a lot of stuff so that's why i don't ask him to do a lot of stuff so that kind of made me upset um how he bashed that uh that part of it but you know, to each his own. If he, he doesn't want to do anything, so be it. But um, I think it is really important to have not only young drivers, but all NASCAR drivers uh, try to be pushing to get to new demographics of the, of the world, to get interested in our sports, whether it's from younger fans to new fans who don't you know, pay attention to it, who aren't young. I mean, they could be full grown. So, uh, and that's everybody. It's not just young drivers who are going to make people appeal to the sport. It's it's the whole whole lot. So, um, I think everybody should be a little bit more open to helping the sport out because that's how it's going to survive. And um, I'm trying to do the best that I can at it. And uh, a lot of other drivers are helping too. It's just trying to get um, trying to get more and more every day. neat thing, you know, NBC, they make you get out and talk on the front stretch, which I think is really cool, and uh, kind of put you face-to-face -face with the fans while you're talking right after you take the checkered flag, and their emotions are, are at the highest, and um, I saw a young fan standing by the fence, and I gave him a checkered flag through the fence, and uh, he, him and his mother came down to Victory Lane afterwards, which was really cool. I got to meet them, but uh, I feel like those little things that you can do to get face-to-face -face with young fans in that big a moment, give them something... Um, and just make a memory. That's that's the biggest thing is just making a memory that lasts for a lifetime. And um, I feel like that was that was a, a pretty cool moment. Um, I was fortunate enough to to have that moment with him. And uh, hopefully there's many more like that. Brian, how much is social media involved in the lifestyle away from the track or at the It depends. You know, I go on kind of spurts to where I don't even look at it for a couple of days, um, and then I'll go where I'm. I'm on it, you know, all day. It just kind of depends what mood I'm in or what, uh, how busy I am um, that certain day. But um, at the racetrack, I try not to look at it too much. Uh, you know, we're focused on, I try to focus on my job. And um, 
but social media is helpful at the racetrack. You see updates and things like that or, or other times. So um, at moments, it's, uh, it's a good thing, and I try to pay attention to it a lot, but I go in spurts. Yeah, I, I, um, it's a great tool. I use it a lot, but uh, sometimes I think a break from it every now and then is a really good thing as well, and just focus on your life and doing what, uh, what you want to do. So um, it's back and forth. Ryan, I know last year you talked. Oh, go ahead. You talked last year about uh, being able to drive for legendary Wood Brothers, making a move to Penske this year. And then, of course, when Daryl had a chance to drive for uh, Petty Motorsports, two legendary uh, teams. Um, what's that conversation looking like, or have you had a chance to talk with him since now he's going to be in that ride full time? Yeah, uh, so his first start in that car was at Pocono when I won the race. So that was, uh, that was really cool. Um, I'm happy for him to get an opportunity like that. And honestly, it uh, I was really, really upset to see him sit out the second half of that year after um, the Xfinity ride let go. And yeah, he had a few starts with Petty. Uh, I think he had three um, throughout the year, uh, or when Eric was hurt. And uh, he did a great job in it. And I'm happy they were able to make that make that work for this year. I know they were working really hard on it um, in the off season, and it was really cool to see it progress. And uh, he kept me updated throughout it. So I, I um, happy for him. I think he's going to do a great job in it. Uh, it's nice. It's a fresh start for that team too. You know, going to. Uh, uh, being a partner with RCR and a new manufacturer and a new driver. So I think that uh, is going to really benefit that team well. So uh, I'm looking forward to racing with him on, on Sundays. And he knows the history behind the Petty name. You know, he's a, it's almost like when I was driving for the Wood Brothers. You know, he understands it. He wants to learn more about it. And he's, a, he's a history buff of the sport. So um, I think that's a good fit. That's a really good fit for him because he appreciates racing and where it's come from. And he appreciates Richard Petty too. So um, I think that's a great fit. And I wish them the best. Thank you. I was going to ask, so, you know, you're saying yes to a lot of stuff. What happens when, don't you ever just want to take a day and, like, lie on the couch and play video games or whatever? Rest. Yeah, there's resting days for sure. But, um, you know, you have to kind of think of the end game. Um, you know, I'd rather make, I'd rather make other people happy than myself. And, and uh, if I have to sacrifice time, I mean, it's just time. You know, it just really doesn't mean much uh, to me personally. It's I'd rather go do something meaningful to the sport uh, than just sit on my couch. 